we are back again with another first impression video and with the usual c6 showcase obviously it is on our favorite new waifu fei Zhao as she shows off her stuff here god damn absolutely love her uh might be my favorite hsr character today by the way in terms of pure aesthetics i love white hair i love her eyes and i love the eyeshadow that she has as well absolutely beautiful character it is a little sus that she doesn't have a tail but i think that's uh lore either way we're gonna go through the usual stuff go over her abilities you know uh show off her potential through a couple comps and we are obviously gonna showcase my favorite content e6 unrelatable whale dps all right and fei Zhao is an absolute monstrous follow-up attack dps right and uh yeah this video is just gonna be going over uh, all of that so let's get right into it so here we are with fei Zhao. obviously i did go ahead and you know deck her out a little bit as you can see with the stats 2.6 a uh, 2.7k attack 148 speed 97 crit rate 177 crit damage this is at rs currently e0 r1 uh, right, so I did deck her out a little bit, but going over her full kit here, we do have the light cone where you do get 15% crit rate. And when the wearer launches a follow-up attack, gains one stack of Luminant Flux, stacking up to two times. Each stack of Lumen Flux enables the ultimate damage dealt by the wearer to ignore 27% of the target's defense when the wearer's turn ends removes one stack of Lumen Flux. Absolutely disgusting light cone humongous uh defense um ignore right absolutely amazing and let's get into also her relics we i am currently running two piece durant as well as four piece valorous you can also go izumo or sal soto they are about five percent or more worse but a lot of people like myself don't have great Duran pieces yet still uh, i've been farming it day in day out. i still don't have a really great set so uh, if you want to sit with those pieces for now, you can use them. But Durin is going to be the best planar set. Four-piece Valorous here as well. I'm literally just going to yoink my pieces off of Yunli and put them on my Fei Zhao. And uh, on these pieces specifically, right, you are going to want to focus a lot on crit rate. Specifically, a lot of people are going to probably be using crit rate bodies. Myself on my actual live account is going to be using a crit rate body because... I don't have that but great stats. I will say you can run crit damage body very easily if you're running like Sal Soto because of the crit rate. But obviously Durin is the end game uh, goal here, right? I am also running speed boots because you do want to try to reach that break point of 134 speed. Very nice there as well. And obviously wind sphere and attack rope. Attack sphere is not that much worse, but generally the wind sphere is going to be what you're trying to go for here. Now going into her traces right her normal attack is uh, any normal basic attack here is her talent Fei Zhao's kit is very very and it, it is a little long-winded here if you look at these uh, they do look very overwhelming but it's not that difficult to understand right so looking at her talent uh thunder hunt can activate ultimate when flying arius reaches six points you will notice when we get into her gameplay later she has these little markings uh next to her and rather than an alt energy bar and it kind of works a little bit like akron but uh compared to akron she does have a potential to have up to as it says here 12 stacks of flying arius this lets you kind of be able to hold multiple alts if you do want to and sometimes even ult back to back right um, so Fei Zhao gains one point of Flying Arius for every two attacks by ally targets. Fei Zhao's ultimate attacks do not count towards this number. After Fei Zhao's teammates attack an enemy target, Fei Zhao immediately launches a follow-up attack against a primary target, dealing wind damage equal to 110% of Fei Zhao's attack. If there is no primary target available, uh, Fei Zhao will attack a random enemy instead. This effect can only trigger once per turn, and the trigger count resets at the start of Fei Zhao's turn. When using this attack, increases damage dealt by this unit by 60% lasting for two turns. Something you will notice here is Fei Zhao is such a massive self-buffer as well. Like, she gives herself so many stats, right? On that point, right, you will be getting 12% crit rate just from her traces here absolutely amazing on top of the 15 if you do get her specialty light cone you're looking at 27 percent 
crit rate just from her light cone as well as her traces obviously a substantial amount of attack as well right we're looking at eight percent six percent right it's it i was about to curse it's gigantic Right, you're looking at 22%, I believe, here, right, from the attack. No, wait, no, just kidding. 28%. It is huge. And then you do have things right here. When using her skill, increases attack by a further 48%, lasting for three turns. Right here, when using ultimate to deal damage to an enemy target, it is considered as a follow-up attack. Follow-up attacks, crit damage increases by 36%, so additionally buffing herself with 36% crit damage. And when the battle starts, you immediately start with three stacks of Flying Arius. So if you remember back to uh, the talent that we were just reading, you need six to cast an alt, stacking up the 12 that you can hold. So immediately you can start battle with three at the start of a turn. If no follow-up attack was launched via talent in the previous turn, then this count as one towards the number of attacks required to gain Flying Arius. Very nice. Now, going into her skill. Uh, single target war axe deals wind damage of 200% uh, of phase attack to its uh, target enemy, then immediately launches one instance of talent follow up attack against the target. Now, this uh, obviously is the follow up attack stated here in the talent, and uh, obviously, because when you count uh, cast her skill, she gives herself that 48% attack buff for three turns. Absolutely massive. And then last but not least, the bread and butter, the big, the big boom, right, of Fei Zhao's kit is her ultimate Terra Split. It is a single target ability, deals wind damage to a single target enemy up to 700% of Fei Zhao's attack. During this time, can ignore weakness type to reduce the target's toughness. When the target is not weakness broken, Fei Zhao's weakness break efficiency increases by 100%. During the attack, Fei Zhao's first launches Bolt Sunder Blitz or War Axe Skyward on the target for a total of six times. At the end, deals wind damage equal to 160% of Fei Zhao's attack to the target. So you will notice here, Fei Zhao has two different attacks within her ultimate, right? One will be basically optimal to use when they are weakness broken, and the other will be optimal to use when they're not weakness broken. So Bolt Thunder Blitz deals wind damage equal to 60% of Fei Zhao's attack to the chosen target if the target is weakness broken, the damage multiplier is increased by 30%. Um, and then you have War Axe Skyward, the other uh, version of her ult, deals wind damage equal to 60% of Fei Zhao's attack to the chosen target. If the target is not weakness broken, the damage multiplier is increased by 30%. So this basically makes you want to pay attention, and specifically if you're playing on manual, to use the correct version of her ultimate, what, based on whether or not they're weakness broken or not. Obviously, um, you will see later, if you do play on autoplay, the AI kind of understands which one to choose and does it on its own, uh, but you could also manually decide as well. Last but not least, her technique, after using technique, enters the onrush state, lasting for 20 seconds while in onrush state, uh, pulls in enemies within a certain range and increases this unit's movement speed by 50%. After entering battle, gain one points of Flying Arius. So, if you compound that with her Heaven's Path, you can start with four off the rip if you use her uh, technique. While in Unrush State, actively attacking will start battle with all pulled enemies after entering battle. Deals wind damage equal to 200% of phase shots attack to all enemies at the start of each wave. This damage is guaranteed to crit. If more than one enemy is pulled in, increase the multiplier of this damage by 100% for up to... Each additional enemy pulled in up to a maximum of 1,000%. Fei Zhao is absolutely disgusting in uh, Sim Universe, Divergent Universe. There's a little, you know, uh, game modes. Like, I'm sure you'll see here. Uh, we're going to put the video here with the Trotters. Just sucking them all up and just obliterating them. Uh, or, or popping our technique and just running through, right? Without just popping barrels and jars etc whatever you want very nice technique and the extra one point of flying arius is very very nice to get her going and we're gonna go over her eidolons here her eidolons obviously by the end of this video we will 
showcase her full E6 damage potential, all that. She's absolutely a monster. But here, Skyward I quell at Eidolon 1 after launching Bolt Sunder Blitz or War Axe Skyward. Additionally, increases the ultimate damage dealt by Phasia by an amount equal to 10% of the original damage. Got stacking up to 5 times and lasting until the end of the ultimate action. Very, very nice. I think it's I think it's uh, pretty substantial, but it, you know, it, let's let's keep going. Uh, Moonward, I wish at Eidolon two, and the talent's effect for every one instance of follow-up attack launched by ally targets, Phase Yao gains one point of flying Aries. This effect can trigger up to six times per turn. This one, that's why I was like talking about here. I was like, oh, that was all right. This her E two. If there was a breakpoint, I would say you want to go for it as a you know a whale, a saver, a you know dolphin, etc. It is E two. This is the flying Aureus stacking assistance is mm, that's what you want right uh looking at our e4 storm word i hear the follow-up attack from talent has this toughness reduction increased by 100 percent and when it launches increases this unit speed by eight percent lasting for two turns this does assist you to get to those speed break points let's say if you don't have e2 robin or let's say your just gear is not that great right it can help you get to those speed break points etc very nice but the toughness break reduction for by 100 percent is also very nice and this one's kind of just middle of the road it's just there a lot of e4s are like that but here we go at e6 homeward i near increases the all type res pen of the ultimate damage dealt by phasia by 20 percent disgusting so at e6 you're gonna have the all type res pen as well as the defense ignore on her weapon holy moly uh talent's follow-up attack damage is considered as ultimate damage at the same time and his damage multiplier increased by 140 percent so at e6 Pretty much, Fei Zhao normally is just popping out two, four, three, four hundred k follow-up attacks nonstop from her talent. Right? Usually at E zero, they're the follow-up attacks are they're nice. They're little tickles here and there. But at E six, they're full-on nukes. Absolutely disgusting. Love the E six. Very nice. And you know. Because Fei Zhao is a follow-up attack character, it is very nice because you kind of see her going over and over and over and over. And it, you know. You're getting your money's worth. So, absolutely great kit. We're going to go into our gameplay here. Uh, Memory of Chaos, etc. And we'll see how she functions. The team that we're mainly going to be focusing on is going to be Fei Zhao, um, Adventuring, a Robin, as well as Topaz. I do I do see a little, you know, come some people talking about uh, farts, you know, right? Fei Zhao, Adventuring, Robin topaz ha 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 um either way right you can topaz with uh moza our brand new four star character there he is you can replace her with moza but if you do have e1 s1 topaz she is generally gonna be the better option um you will see later on numbi and uh Fei Zhao are gonna be tag teaming people it is gonna be amazing but yeah let's get into the gameplay so here we are in the memory of chaos this is going to be the e0 s1 Fei Zhao. we are running a venturing robin this is going to be an e1 s1 topaz for the sake of the showcase because just just because i didn't i kind of didn't want to use moza but obviously moza here would be a pretty good choice uh we're going to start off with robin here right very nice as you can see there, we have four Arius points because we did start with the technique for Fei Zhao. Going right into it, we already have six, but we are going to hold it here for now. Obviously, remember that she does stack up until 12, so it is something that we can hold on to for as long as we want. Uh, we're going to unload all the stuff here on a Topaz. Uh, maybe wording's a little sussy there. Make sure to use your E where you can just to make sure that you do have Fei Zhao's uh, attack buff. Uh, obviously, I think I already did use it, so I definitely don't have to use it again. But, you know, we do have plenty of skill points in this team comp as well at our disposal. Um, and I'll probably shoot here with Topaz. And then Robin Alt. Action forward our entire team. And, uh, you know, a little Numbi Fei Zhao tag team action right here. 
Now, we could hold our ult here, but we're already at 12, so I do want to just whip it out. Uh, it is very... With this team, it you build stacks on phase out so quickly. And there's her ultimate. I will say, as you can notice, there are two different attacks within her ultimate, but... Right, if you don't want to really use your brain, you can kind of just press spacebar, mash spacebar, and the game will automatically figure out whether the target is in weakness state or not, and properly apply the correct um, attack. Um, here we go into the Kafka half. 40k with the follow-up attack for Fei Zhao. At E0, this damage is, you know, it's pretty minor. It's just there. Uh, extra couple hits. But once we get to E6, it is going to be monstrous. We are at 12 Aria stacks. At this point, we can just pop it. Honestly, I should just pop ult here, but I'm probably just going to smack this guy one more time. But may maybe we'll ult him. Uh, yeah. You know, let me just double check that I do have the uh, attack buff. Yep, we do. We're, we're good. And you know what? Let's just unleash it right here. Absolute destruction. Holy moly. 347k. And we still have another ult if we wanted to. But, you know, let's whittle Kafka down a little. I, I maybe want to set up so that we can may maybe do a little cinematic finisher. Uh, maybe 57%. I don't think this is enough. Ah, uh, 40% numby. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Robin going again for us. Boom. Action forward. Very nice. You don't get to go, Kafka. Stop it. Uh, Ventry, smack, follow up attack. Uh, oh, wait. No. My bad. Forgot. We have to wait for the reset. And there we go. And now, let's take a peek at the E6. This is going to be E6 R1. All right. Still E1, R, E6, S1. All right. This is going to still be E1, S1. Topaz, Robin, E0, Aventurine, E0 as well. Obviously, this all gets better uh, with a couple idols of Robin, etc. But, you know, this is just going to be E0, Robin, uh, E1, S1, Topaz, and E0, Aventurine. Uh, here we go. Pop and Robin E. You will notice... We get these Aria stacks 10 times faster now. We're going to be stacking immediately at 7 stacks already. Absolutely disgusting. Let's pop our E, get our attack buff. Very nice. Already at 8 stacks. That follow-up attack, 179,000. If you remember, our E0 was doing like 40k, right? 142,000 follow-up attacks every freaking action like god damn this point we could uh alt but you know like th this is the thing with e6 right at at this point i could just like constantly alt right because our stacks are so freely gained um it really is very very simple to get more and more stacks very very quickly um but you know let's hold it i might alt here we'll see here we go absolutely disgusting damage 700k 809k huge damage and here we go going into the second half we already still have eight stacks going into it so disgusting um eventually adult boom get that nine stack boom get that 10 stack boom with the follow 228k follow attack 11 stacks, 12 stacks, and honestly, at this point, I could probably double alt Kafka, and she's dead. Let's do it. Boom. Okay. She, oh, my gosh. She live with, You know what? Ah, cinema finishing. Boom. A one. A two. Three. Four. Five. Oh. Back-to-back -back 900k ultimates. Right, obviously, a lot of people are going to be like, oh my goodness, that's not as much damage as Acheron. What's up with that? Well, listen, the thing is, right, she can ult at a much higher frequency, right? It is absolutely disgusting. The mechanic to get, like, two different, or two charges of her ult ready at any time, especially at E6 when you do charge that much faster, it is so disgusting. But yeah, uh, how about we do, you know, a little extra uh, showcase. We are going to try a three-man team zero cycle with E6 Fei Zhao with Robin and eventually no Topaz. It should be very doable. Uh, I mean, this is an E6 character after all. 
I don't know if you guys noticed, uh, you kind of get to jiggle Kafka around there a little bit. It's, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, and here we go. It should be pretty much about the same setup. Uh, shouldn't be an issue. I'm probably going to use uh, Fei Xiao's ult a bit more aggressively rather than trying to hold uh, charges just because... Uh, I, you know, it is three, man. We are down Topaz. Topaz is a significant boost, right? Uh, but it is what it is, right? Without the de debtor status, it is, it is a little stinky, but... There we go. Phase out alt. Obliterate this little bro on the side. I don't think this might be enough to kill, but it, it should be fine. We should be... Oh, yep. Absolutely disgusting. 138k follow-up attack. Holy moly. And we should still be able to finish it off here. Let's get a little adventuring going. Yep, we have immediately six charges again. Adventuring alt. Very nice. Boom. That is so tragic. He's little. Uh, this should this should be fine. Boom. Yep. Okay, that was a little close, but it, it works. Zero cycle still. <laughs> All right. That mob literally was with one HP. Unfortunate. But here we go. Into the second half. We are already at 10 stacks. Um, I'm pretty sure I have my E up. So let's just alt this, obliterate this guy on the side. I think this kills. Honestly, um, skill issue. My relics aren't good enough. <laughs> And here we go, Kafka. We already are at six stacks, seven stacks. Robin also about to end. Let's try to kill her before it ends. It's not going to be enough. Pretty close. Uh, Robin, we're going to... I um, I could hold Robin ult, but you know what? Let's just go. I'm pretty sure we kill her in this loop right here with Fei Xiao adventuring with the follow-up attack. It should be enough. Okay, after this one. Boom. There we go. 153k follow-up attack. Absolutely disgusting. Holy moly. And yeah, that's pretty much it. E6-3, man. Disgusting team comp. Absolutely. Um, little, little, little special for you right there. A little extra <laughs> fan service there. Uh, let's try her out in Apocalyptic Shadow. Uh, we are going to be going against the event train boss. And it should be pretty solid uh, for the most part. Obviously, it's a little it's a little scuff, But surely I'll, uh, I'll, I know how to do math. Simple math and numbers. Uh, anyways, uh, let's get into that part. So here we are, Apocalyptic Shadow. We are gonna be running into the first half here against Aventurine. The gimmick against these, uh, this, uh, this Aventurine is, uh, I mean, uh, any Aventurine, right? Uh, it's, it's a whole dice number game. Uh, but you know, I'm, I'm a smart, smart adult man that knows how to do math. So surely, here we go. I will warn anybody. You see, I just toggled the auto off. Don't do this boss on auto it's it's absolutely nonsensical so the, the, the whole point here right is i need to hit the dice that have lower numbers than my points yeah so i could accumulate points i tried this on auto just the first time around just to see the stinking ai just kept on hitting a ventry and not the dice and i lost like a 500 action value just like wondering what's going on and then i paid attention and read the uh, read the description i was like oh uh anyways here we go this is still E6S1. That's right. I just ulted a dice. I don't care. In this mode, right, we don't really get an opportunity to hit Aventurine for a while. So uh, you build up stacks so fast. So it might as well. Uh, five is less than 27. So let's hit number five here. Robin alt. Boom. Five is less than 27. Boom. Smack that. Absolutely disgusting follow-up attacks. Pretty much making these dice like one-shottable. Uh, boom. Like that. 50 is greater than 49. We should be able to unload on Aventurine here. The big brunt of your damage against this is definitely after you break. But, you know. So, we're probably not going to be able to kill him. Even with, with our ult. Our first phase out ult here. Yeah. We're, we're not going to be able to kill him. We're probably going to have to pop a second ult. Alright. Pop a second ult here. Doesn't really matter. Just because we're going right into the next half, which will probably... We'll have two sex of ult by then as well. So, here we go. More dice games, number games. But very, very straightforward. Pretty 
freaking easy. Okay, hit the five. Yep. I'm like double checking <laughs> the numbers so I don't mess up. Very nice. I should technically hold the 2x and hit the 10, but I don't think it really matters at this point. Just double the 14, right? So the logic there was if, if I hit the 10 and then raise my points and then double, it would have even been greater. Uh, but Or I could have even farmed more points, but it, it's fine. At this point, it's smooth sailing. Nine more points. We just hit the 25. Get the, get the, get the big, big boost. And then obliterate our venture with double ult. There we go. Boom. This might actually kill him because we break. No, no, it's not enough damage. Off rip. We got to do one more. 1.28 mil. And here we go. One more phase out ult to finish the old gambler off. Boom, 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 2.1 million. Absolutely disgusting. 3,864. 1864 action value. Not bad at all absolutely disgusting and that is going to be it some quick additional thoughts as well um if you do wonder like right you know you're someone who has acheron and you're wondering oh should i pull phase out i will say right obviously they do all kind of feel similar because they are characters that require x amount of points uh to unleash your ultimate rather than being played around energy i will say for me personally i do really like phase Zhao's gameplay mainly because i am a bit of a team follow-up attack uh fanboy uh right i have been investing into follow-up attack since robin since topaz uh, i have pulled don't ask me why i pulled e6 young lee as well but she's really really freaking fun as well right a lot of these characters i am a big fan of follow-up attack and i think just the way follow-up attack teams really do kind of pace they feel really good obviously akron is still a character of all time i will say if you already have akron you're probably fine uh fei Xiao, though is i, I think you know it's definitely something for people who are follow-up attack enthusiasts, right? And I am one of them, so I will be pulling for her for sure. Um, and I guess, you know, future potential. Uh, I think Fei Xiao does have potential for even more, right? Uh, HSR has been crossing over into a lot of characters who have multi-roles. Uh, right now, Aventurine is great, but Im imagine, you know, uh, imagine... I could see a future where we have an Aventurine and Robin in one. That sounds absolutely disgusting, but who knows? Uh, we could also see a much better slot in for Topaz as well into the future. As much as I hate saying that because I do love Topaz. And there are some team comps that I have, I have cooked up. Uh, I, I, I do think some people, some other people might be thinking about it as well. Maybe I'm coping a little because I have E6 Yunli, but there is a, in my opinion, a possible future where you could see a Yunli Phasia multi-core team. Uh, for people who don't really know, multi-core generally in uh, a lot of other games refers to the idea of having two DPSs, two different characters uh, basically carrying the team or as the main carries, right? Uh, so the idea here is if there's going to be a mode where a mob is going to have really high HP and goes really fast really often, Yun Li can, that, can be that source of constantly proccing attacks, constantly parrying, etc., right? And that is going to add quite a few amount of you know uh flying arius points for phase out and it might work as a double dps comp where yun lee is constantly parrying deleting people and then phase Xiao is also deleting people with her ultimate so it could be a possible future team comp i don't know if there's any really good option right now maybe max 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 difficulty swarm um uh swarm uh boss right maybe maybe we have something like that but uh for the most part that's like the main team come i've cooked up there could be others out there i don't really uh, i haven't really looked deep into it but definitely future potential and that is going to be our e6 phase out showcase thank you everybody for watching obviously this is going to be my final thoughts i did not use e2 s1 or, or i did not use e2 robin obviously with e2 robin our numbers could have been much crazier uh but you know gotta keep a little content for the stream as well as for future videos so if you do want to see that come follow at twitch.tv slash filemaster i'm there every day 3 30 pacific 6 30 eastern every day 365 days a year uh so tune in i might uh, i 
I might E6 phase out. We'll see. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe the HSR gods are kind to me uh, with her rate up, right? I, I don't know. Either way, uh, final thoughts on her. I do think Robin is such a such a premium top tier support for her so if you do not have robin it's gonna feel a little stinky but you know definitely don't feel too bad as well as topaz great uh topaz is going to be moza so and moza is going to be on raid up with fei Zhao. so definitely worth uh getting him as well if you don't have topaz especially e1 s1 topaz um and uh, fei Zhao absolutely beautiful character my gear was a little disgusting it is what it is uh just to like uh, you know maybe like let's take a look at the gear that's mediocre meh okay all right don't look at these pieces i mean those are kind of disgusting the sphere is like kind of whatever uh but you know the link rope what the heck what the all right some of these are absolutely bonkers i my live facial looks a hundred times worse than this by the way uh either way right great character we're gonna be pulling for her on monday uh if you guys didn't know for uh america frogs right the banner for hsr for face out is going to be on monday rather than tuesday uh so definitely be there for that we'll be pulling as soon as the banner goes live and uh, yeah thank you everybody for watching if you have any criticism any recommendations definitely do leave it in the comments and uh, yeah, that is going to do it for us today. Until the next time, we'll probably have a video coming out for Ling Sha as well when she is available. Very beautiful character over there. And uh, yeah, good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh my gosh, she's so pretty.